sensational guest, Romina Arena. She is an international sensation in every way, composer, singer, songwriter, Grammy winning. Um, she's written books. She has done so much that an introduction doesn't even do her justice. Thank you for joining us. Well, wow, so much. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for having me, uh, everyone. I want to say that the Grammy is more of a collaboration of done. I did not win yeah. the Grammy, but I collaborated with Ennio Morricone, which won many Grammys. So that was part of my uh, success as well. But thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. You are incredible. I adore you, and I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> oh, what an honor. By the way, that little backdrop behind you, I know that you're um, coming to us, not from Italy at the moment, but from Hawaii, from your offices there, right? That's right. We have an office here in uh, Oahu, the island of Oahu, basically by Honolulu. And I am actually right now in the North Shore of the island, the beautiful called Turtle Bay Resort. It's absolutely beautiful. And also we have, of course, offices in Waikiki Beach and, and it's beautiful. It's not, uh, I think it's beautiful, but not like Italy. I think we have amazing beaches there and places, but this is absolutely stunning. And the weather is, I wish you were with me right now. You could enjoy with me the warmth of the tropics. <laughs> I could have, I could have flown there. We could have done the interview I in know. person, but next we'll time. do that one next time. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about you as a kid, because you've done so much in the years that you've been um, performing that it's, I don't know, you seem to have um, more, more months in a year than most of us. So as a little kid, right? You grew up um, in Sicily, right? Correct. I was, uh, I was a little girl raised by a single mom. Uh, my mm. dad, unfortunately, you know, left when I was a kid. Um, and, uh, you know, and we were just, you know, she and I being very close and she wanted to fulfill a void that was left by my dad. So she literally, sent me into the world of music and entertainment by starting with dancing. I was actually taking uh, ballet classes, you know, classical ballet, because I was in love with the sound of classical music. But then uh, suddenly she decided to sign me up for a, uh, an audition uh, for the Disney, the Italian Mickey Mouse Club called Topolino. Uh, in fact, you have a good friend, Anna, that actually used to watch me on Italian television as a little kid uh, playing Mickey Mouse. I mean, I was singing the songs of Disney. And the rest is history. It was a beautiful, a little painful, you know, growing up with a father figure um, life. But my mom has always been an incredible woman and I give so much power to the uh, single moms out there and women mm. in general that do so much for their children. There's so much respect for me because I had a great mother that taught me the best. I went to the best schools. I learned 11 languages. It's been a great uh, childhood. And, you know, I had, of course, as you know, moments of my life that have been a little challenging, but my childhood was absolutely beautiful. So you were performing at a very, very young age. And this is something you decided when you were really young that you wanted to do. You were dancing at the time. When did you get into singing? I think it was pretty soon because I uh, I kind of went uh, hand in hand the, the dancing with the singing. I just, my mama used to watch me like moving and shaking my body in front of uh, cartoons and music from television. So she thought maybe she can <laughs> even sing. And when I did that audition for Disney, um, I remember I was scared, terrified. I actually remember there was a theater full of kids and parents and I, when I got on stage, the Mr. Mr. Disney at the time, whomever was there in Italy, uh, kind of felt that there was something special in me, but he wanted to hear me. I couldn't sing. I was blocked. So he sent everyone away. There were about 200 people in the theater for the audition. She sent the mothers, fathers, kids away and said, would you do me a favor? Can you just turn around, look at the wall and sing for me? And I just, I was four. Wow. I, I did not even know what I was doing, but I sang, you know, my favorite, you know, Topolino Mickey Mouse song, or when you wish upon a star thing was Pinocchio. And uh, he was completely taken away. And then the, they added some music and started dancing. So it kind of singing went with dancing. Although I wanted to become a ballerina, that was really my, my, my dream to become a baller, classical ballet dancer. But then, you know, my mother realized as a momager, <laughs> momager, that uh, singing was making more money than dancing. So she said, you know what? You know, you're going to be continuing on singing. And I was very sad that I wanted to dance, but I ended up buying her a house at the age of six with Disney. And the rest of history has been, from the moment on, the singing world, music as a creator or performer has captured music chosen me. I didn't choose music, it kind of followed me. And I had to fall in love with it. So it was a beautiful thing that fulfilled the, the void. Sometimes 
we feel so lonely without people that we love, you know, if we're missing a, a, a loved one. And, and music finds the therapy, right? The, the way to connect to our hearts. And that's what I think ever, ever since I was a little kid, uh, I felt that God was giving me this opportunity to share with the world. And so I did, I continued despite the ups and downs of life, but still to this day. And you had, you had quite an up and down when you were about 15 years of age. Would you please tell our audience um, what happened? Because this remains an aha moment for me every time I hear it. Yeah, so of course it's a, it's a sad story that still brings uh, um, pain in my heart when I talk about it. Although many times people talk about it um, because of course there's a lot of curiosity and a lot of inspiration behind it. But I was, uh, yeah, when I was a teenager, I went to Australia, Sydney. I performed my first big concert at the Sydney Opera House, and um, it was incredible. I was opening for another artist, wow. an older man, man. and uh, basically this, um, well, when I came back from this uh, tour to Sicily, a terrible <laughs> tragedy happened to me that changed my life forever, this uh, other artist, for jealousy or for insecurity or what have you, um, locked me into a dressing room, and it was not, thank God, it was not sexual attack <clears throat> but he had basically beat me beat me up he was high on drugs or alcohol whatever what have you and um as you can say as you can see it's very emotional for me to talk about it but he took uh, um a knife and he injured my vocal cords and with that of course he beat me into a comatose situation in which i i'm a lot i'm very lucky to be alive but when i woke up from this um chronic trauma this this um comatose situation, I did not have any voice. I literally, my vocal cords were injured. That's why when I speak, uh, I still sound so raspy. People think that I smoke. I never smoke a cigarette in my whole life. I don't drink, I'm a strange Italian. Hey, don't tell my wine partner <laughs> that I drink. No, but, uh, but the truth is that, uh, you know, uh, doctors say you never sing again. And imagine when someone deprives you of the most important thing that you have, like in this case is your voice, because that was, the life I was given, not having a family, not only having my mom, and music was giving me all the strength. Suddenly, even that one, that was taken away from me. I felt like the delight that God gave me was suddenly shattered, uh, was oh. turned down because you know some devilish you know person decided to do that to me. But I um, I beat all the odds, and after many uh, years, three years of silence and surgeries and speech therapists and vocal coaches, uh, a huge doses of faith which is what really rules my life, faith and belief in God and in the higher power. Not only, not only my voice came back, but it returned with a higher, almost like a strange side effect. It returned with a three wow. octave range extension higher, taking into a five octave vocal range, which means pretty, you know, pretty large extension as a vocalist, very rare. But I didn't, wow. it was a completely different voice too, which was very strange, Deborah, because when I started singing, my voice was going all over the place. It's long, long. I didn't know how to master it because it was, it was like, what, what is, what is going on? And then I realized that there was something. There was a bigger mission. That wasn't just for me to sing to the world, be another singer, but really the God. And I call God because I believe in that. Wanted me to share to the world that there was something more. I had to inspire people that no matter how long you get in life, you can always bounce back despite the tragedies and all the things that happen to you. You have to find the strength. So if I can be the strength for all of you, for anyone, even if I change one person, even if I inspire one person with my message, then then my life has been lived worthwhile. You are such a beautiful person. I'm telling you, ever since we first Somebody met, you. I've been, um, I love when you say that, I'm a reflection of you. That is actually beautiful that you say that. It really makes someone feel very special. So thank you, you for that. Yeah, no, me too. Um, but wow, I, I really, even hearing the story and, you know, you, you tell it and I can visualize it as you speak about it. But the moment that you discovered that, oh my goodness, I have a range of five octaves. Yeah, it was, uh, what was, it was on the what was that? I didn't hmm. even know. I worked with speech therapists and vocal coaches. I actually worked with a lot of opera sing uh, opera teachers. I did not right. want to be an opera singer. But I, one very interesting thing, I can share a little story that's very unique. I never told anyone. Scoop. Oh. <laughs> so basically, because I was trained classically, 
and I've never done that before. Like I never, I studied music, piano, because I compose, but I never really studied singing up to the moment. And I, I learned how to use, of course, my breathing, right? Because it's singers, that's what they do. And the diaphragm, the muscle in my stomach, to basically bring the sound all the way through my cheekbones, making it vibrate, called the mask. It's called the mask. Mm. So they're almost bypassing, not quite, but almost bypassing the vocal cords. So barely yeah. touch them. And then bring the sound from your cheekbones. Make, I'm trying to explain in a way that it's easy for everybody to understand, to your head tones so that you could reach the high note. And wow. it's a very unique way you, you position your head to really obtain the sound. But it's a lot to do with your breathing and the way your mask, so literally the bones of your face, can work together with your vocal cords and your diaphragm, which eventually is the strength, right? It's the strength on how you deliver right. music and, and right. singing. So that's how it happens. I do use all this and it's a lot of, uh, <laughs> I feel like I lose 10 pounds with my thing, which is not a bad thing. <laughs> I have to tell you, I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> you are so funny. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to remember that little lesson that you just taught me when I'm singing in the shower because yeah. I have no range. I am awful. I can That's hardly you carry think. a tune. Let me hear okay, you maybe. do some singing, so maybe I'll, I will drink some vino at that time, and then we'll, we'll see. I think you can sing with me. You might be surprised. I made everybody sing. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> you were so hilarious. I, by the way, to, the, uh, to our audience, I did ask if, if Romina would sing on our show. She cannot because she's in the middle of practicing, and she doesn't want to, you know, sort of stretch her voice, right? Is that how you say? I don't want to sound so. like a diva. I just that, you know, it's also very... No! Uh, 11 a.m. is so early because I usually rehearse. I have the, you know, Hawaiian Symphony and other people, musicians that I'm working with right now on a major project here in Hawaii. And we rehearse until 2 a.m. in the morning, 3 a.m. in the morning. So for me, like when it's like, you have an interview at 11 a.m., I'm like, why is it like 7 a.m.? <laughs> so my voice and most singers, will, when they go, to, you know, when I go to Good Morning America or any of these shows, it's so terrifying for me. Like I had to go to sleep at 4 p.m. the day before, <laughs> pretending that I'm waking up wow. like a because it, your voice needs a lot of rest. So I don't, I don't want to scare all of you. Like, what, what the hell is going on? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think people get it. They get it. They really, they really understand. No, but yeah. I just want. Um, let's talk about some of the amazing um, performers that you have sung with. Right? Tell us. Would you? You can even list them because it's such a a moment yeah. to even hear. Go ahead. Yes, I mean, I mean literally, I perform with everyone. I mean, from. Lionel Richie, to Brian Wilson, the Beach Boys, to headlining on Celine Dion stage at the Colosseum of Caesar Palace, to both Andrea Bocelli, to uh, the, the three tenors I collaborated with, the, uh, the Pavarotti International, to also producing a number of artists. I've been writing music from Britney Spears, to the Sicilian tenors, to Andrea Bocelli, to uh, Holly Steele and Daniel Emmett, which are the uh, winners and finalists of America's Got Talent and Britain's Got Talent. So, and I also recorded music with a number of major um, Grammy and Oscar winning producers and composers from uh, my beautiful collaboration with the, the late, my mentor, Oscar winning film, legendary composer, Ennio Morricone, which uh, composed the music for The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, Once Upon a Time in America, The Untouchables, The Eight Full Eight, um, and actually his manager now, this is another scoop that nobody knows about, the manager of Ennio Morricone, which uh, for the last 20 years has been uh, transforming him from a composer to a pop star because Ennio started touring the world with his incredible music. Um, he's, he's also produced uh, Andrea Bocelli's latest Christmas special. Oh. Um, he's now my manager, the great Luigi Caiola. And together now we're working on a spectacular project, another new record uh, with Ennio, because when Ennio was alive, Deborah and everyone, he uh, he actually met me at 13, so before I was attacked. And I, I went to his beautiful palatial house in Rome. They used to belong to Sophia Loren. Loren. And uh, when I was there, uh, I was coming from Disney. And I, I, every kid at Disney wanted to do like pop songs, love, you know, teenager songs. I wanted to sing the music of Ennio Morricone. I loved the music from ah. Once Upon a Time in the West and Once Upon, you know, Once Upon a Time in America and Cinema Paradiso and all these beautiful new movies that he scored. And I said, Master, I want to work with you. And he's like, what do you mean work with me? You are a Mickey Mouse singer. What do you want from me? I'm a big composer. I said, but yeah, I love your music. He goes, ah, go away. He goes, come back to me only when you make a career out of yourself. So it took me 20 years to return with millions of sales and major record deals I've done. 
And I came back to him and I said, Master, I'm ready. And he goes, well, first I had to hear wow. you. And he heard my voice and he said, and this is quoted on the Malibu Times. If you Google Malibu Times, my name, and then you Morricone, he literally said to the journalist, the Romina is the most dominant female artist I've ever worked with and singer. And uh, he allowed me, uh, the only, as the only artist, the only, at least the first female artist to write original lyrics in multiple languages, because I do write, sing, and speak fluently in 11 languages. But he allowed me to write for the first time and record uh, with his support uh, 15 of his most iconic movie scores of all time. So for the first time, for example, the music wow. of Once Upon a Time in America became a song called Tio Amato. Right or the musical Cinema Paradiso, or even the music from The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, I ended up putting lyrics and singing uh, for a fistful of dollars. So just, uh, you know, that for me was one of the biggest things among all the other artists I worked with. But also I've been produced by an incredible man who's no longer alive, but I want to bring up his name too. His name was Bob Johnston. Bob Johnston was the first record producer, multi-Grammy winner, who discovered and produced, and even co-wrote, uh, for Bob Dylan, Johnny Cash, Willie Nelson, Simon Garfunkel, and some girl from Sicily by the name of Romina Arena. <laughs> and uh, some girl from Sicily, yeah. Some girl from Sicily. <laughs> Me. You know, I, 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 These people you know, just, <laughs> you know, but I want to bring up, because you talked about being a female composer, right? Only 2% of uh, composers mm -hmm. are female in the world. That's extraordinary. So you are in great company but small company um yeah, small company that yeah yeah but how can we change that are you working to, uh, with other women to try and change that and change that oh, dialogue yes. i'm actually yeah. well first of all i've been doing i've been scoring uh, movies advertising campaigns and most people know me as a singer songwriter and executive producer you know i produce also television specials for disney abc espn and i started them too but in reality some of the things that are very dear to my heart and maybe because my work with Ennio Morricone as a composer, I always love to create scores. So music, music for movies, that was something that always talked to me. And as I was working on a Netflix project, you know, for a project coming out, I just started reaching out to other female composers. And also I teamed up with a, one of the biggest Italian actresses uh, in Italy. Her name is Claudia Gerini. She is actually the co-star with uh, Keanu Reeves on John Wick 2, she star, co starring, uh, co starred with uh, Mel Gibson on The Passion of the Christ. And I want you to interview her because she's incredible. And um, I mean, if you want to, <laughs> of course, I want you to, if you like to. No, be great. <laughs> and uh, she and I uh, talked about literally creating even on a word and more uh, exposure for female composers because we knew that something has to be done. That, I mean, I, I love all the male composers out there. But hey, we women have so much feeling and so much emotion that if translated into music, imagine what we could do if we can double, triple, multiply the number of female composers out there. There's a lot of female singers and some writers, but not many women really take a stab at uh, writing music for film, advertising, video games, which I do, uh, all this stuff. So it's any, and also for those artists out there that might watch, they might want to, you know, perhaps support their career even more as right now with the, you know, with COVID, the, the performances are over. Uh, Spotify, yes, you got digital sales, but doesn't really pay much. Even if you sell a tri trillion uh, downloads, you know, you, you make $5,000. <laughs> so basically, you know, I feel that creating music as, as an artist period, but in particular women for media, a variety of media, which is also a lot of digital stuff that is going on now with, Netflix, Hulu, and every day a new streaming service, you know, the number of content is quintuplying and we all need to kind of move forward for that, not being afraid to try something new if we have the talent. If you can write a song, you can write scores. And uh, L let me ask you, what is the, if you don't mind being brief about this one, what is the process to writing a score? Do you close your eyes? Do you watch the film first? Like, how, how do you do that? Yes. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> There's different ways everyone does differently. Uh, sometimes, I mean, I personally have to read a screenplay first. Um, yeah. For example, Ennio Morricone used to um, write the score uh, without watching the movie. And eventually mm. they kind of wow. added it together. I know it was kind of strange, but that's the way he did it. I, you know, I can't somehow, 
I mean, occasionally I would watch some some scenes, uh, maybe from the director's cut or editing, and and say, oh, I'm inspired by that. So I can, if I look at the dialogue between two people, I will start hearing just like I do with any other song. It doesn't really take a lot to rest. I mean, I don't want to make it so easy, but if you can hum a melody, <laughs> around, honestly, anyone can really write a beautiful song. If you, of course, you have to cultivate, you have to work at it. It's a craft, as every as any other craft, you have to work, you know, on it. But if you work, you know, if you let your your, you know, your emotions go and you hear the melody and you can hum it, you can literally. What I do is I hum the melody, so I read the screenplay, and then I kind of like hum some melodies that could go in different parts of the, the movie because I know working with the music supervisor, which is the person that's hired by the director and the producer in the studio to select the pieces of music that go into film and television, and and I find out what where music is needed. And then I kind of go into the recording studio and I have, of course, my partners, I have GPS songs, great partners of mine in Chicago and we, among other amazing people, even uh, the man that runs my company. Uh, there has also been a huge Disney executive, Forrest Fisher. He's also an incredible musician and some writer. So it depends on who I am or oh, some other major people, like I work with Fox or Disney people. And uh, we come together and then we bring the sound. So we start with the piano and then we add you know, other, you know, instrumentation, depending by the the moment in the movie, it could be just a very solemn, very kind of darker or, or subtle kind of moment. So you have to be very cautious or it can be like a chase. So you have to be a little more creative and create the sounds of that. And so you work with a great engineer. I have amazing people working with me, but you know, the creativity comes from me. Then I am, um, Steven Spielberg always said, you know, you need to, even if you know that you're good at what you do, you need to surround yourself with people that know more than you do, or they are great in supporting what is lacking in you. So I bring together great wow. people, and then I, I let wow. them their job after I deliver the writing of the music. I write on my music, of course, and uh, I produce on my music. I can also do on my own, but I feel that there's so much happiness in sharing sounds with others and coming together as a team, a studio. The studio work is just like the stage work that I do is something that I just adore. So is there one that you prefer over another? Like, do you prefer being in front of a live audience and performing? I do. Um, I you do. do. Yes, you do. I do. Do you and prefer, I'm... hang on, uh, collaborating on a stage with another performer? Or do you like to be uh, presented on your own? What What's I what really of... gets you? Well, as you can tell, I'm kind of powerful, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people go, Romina, so much energy. Uh, and I don't even drink espresso, so it's kind of, it's, I'm a natural uh, high person, you know. But Beautiful. I, so, so when I am on stage, of course, I kind of command the presence. But I do love having uh, amazing people. I do love performing with symphonies, for example. In fact, we talked about San Pedro Symphony. They do something there at the Warner Theater, oh. you know, many times. Um, I do love working with that. And I do love working with incredible musicians. I, one of my best experiences that I've done on stage actually was working uh, with uh, two people, uh, Jim Wilson, which is a billboard top pianist uh, that, uh, with whom I did uh, an incredible national, my first PBS TV special appearance. And then my one of my biggest exciting moments was when I uh, worked uh, in studio as a recording and also in on stage with the great Eric Riggler. And Eric Riggler is the the famous pipes player that plays in Titanic, the famous oh. like all the pipes and Braveheart. So he's the Titanic and Braveheart famous, beautiful pipes that you hear on Celine and the score of Titanic and Braveheart with Mel Gibson. And wow. he played with my song "Fly Me Home." And uh, anyway, that was an incredible experience. So being on stage is definitely one of my favorite things to do. But I do love. Recording. <laughs> You're working on a film, right, about your life, correct? Yes. Well, there there are several movies, and I don't know which one is going to come first because we started. I, see, for example, I never wanted to make a movie about my life story. Never. I Why? I, I mean, wait, 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 wait. Let me talk for a second now. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you've done everything. Yeah, I'm in awe of you. Like I said, you've got more hours <laughs> in your day. No, no, no. You've got more hours in your day than I do. I don't know where they are, but you've got more because look, you've I'm performed for. No, no, you've. <laughs> I don't either. No you sleep. perform no, like three hours. You perform for presidents, popes. You've yeah. worked with the absolute greatest, as you said, the three tenors, um, uh, Andre Bocelli, so 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 many others. Yeah. Um, yes. You compose. You um, Sydney Opera House. I mean, it's just 
incredible. You've been working with Disney your entire career since you were a little yeah. kid at the age oh, no, of four, yes. Yes. right? Since the age yeah. of four. Yes. Um, and they're doing a film, right, about you. Yeah, so um, what happened, Deborah, is that I was yeah. by a nine time, I, I cannot reveal his name because he's working on four other movies with me. We're doing several major motion pictures in which I will start, I will be actually be starring in my first <clears throat> very own movie musical that I wrote, composing the music for, and I will start and he will produce the two with a big studio. I cannot say much about it. Some people don't see me often go out there in the world, but I've been preparing the last couple of years. So even with COVID, wow. I still worked hard. I'm working. Yes, and I was approached by uh, the, the, good, the, the team of this nine time Oscar winner. They came to me and said, we feel that your life story should be told. Wow. Because the world will feel inspired. And I re rejected in the beginning. I just didn't want to, I, I didn't want to capitalize on a tragedy. I didn't want to make people think, oh, she's doing it for, you know, exposure. But then I realized that they, I could become the beacon of hope uh, for people. And really, not just the people that have dreams as far as being singers or performers, but anyone, everybody's dream. You have dreams, you told me. Like, we all have dreams and we need to, our job in this world is to inspire. So if, whether it's a story, a song, uh, you do such a beautiful job as a journalist, we all have a message that's to be told. So if that is the case, if my story can be used only as a tool of empowering other people to believe that all things are possible with God, of course, and with hard work, because I have to tell you, <laughs> this business is not for the faint of heart. Like if you don't have, you know, and I'm, I'm Sicilian, I'm a young immigrant. I mean, I came here as a teenager, but still, you know, I'm still young and I'm still, you know, learning a lot about America. I have now, you know, double citizenship. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm a full America, but I'm Italian as well. But still in the business, this business is very tough. And if you don't, I hate to say this, it's a cutthroat business. I feel like there is a book there. <laughs> but I mean, like it really is because you've got to be very, very strong. And the message, if it's not for the right reason, there's no reason to do a movie about your life story. But, you know, wow. I am not in a hurry to do it. Like, I, I, this has been, you know, we've been working on this for quite some time. But then I had a major offer from a film studio, which we're doing right now. And uh, I accepted that, that offer. And we wow. started working on, on Romina being the, the star of these musicals, because I love musicals. As you know, I come from, you know, who said the ball up shows people cannot dance? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so and my background, of course, is, is dancing and music, but also I write and, and scream write. And so uh, this huge, it's one of the top people in Hollywood, and, and you know who that is, we cannot say who he is, but you know, um, you know, decided to partner with me. And I'm so honored because I love him. And he's the biggest. And I, and I know it's a, he's a big one. He's a yes. big mover yes. in Hollywood. And when you're able to, I hope you'll tell us. Because Hopefully. I'm very excited for you. We're about um, to do actually. There's something more coming up that I cannot say, but there's an an additional oh. huge figure with him coming in on, on the television project I'm doing. So I cannot again. I cannot say much. I will tell you the one thing. I'm doing something extraordinary, which I don't know if I told you. I don't know if I can share more with you at this moment, uh, if you if you allow me to, of course. Uh, but I'm working with Gigi, my manager, Luigi Cayola, uh, along with Maurizio Bezzeccheri, which is the chief of staff of the city of Pompeii. In, in, you know, Pompeii is, you know, oh. incredible city, the most beautiful, like with Rome, really is the city that gave, almost gave birth to Italy because, it, you know, with the, all the ancient Roman history and, of course, the Vesuvius, the, the, the volcano that destroyed, you know, centuries, you, you know, thousands of years ago, this beautiful city. Now we are going back to Pompeii with this nine-time Oscar winner, with a couple of other major names, uh, because we want to promote Pompeii wow. to the world. And I invite everyone to visit Pompeii. It's absolutely <laughs> stunning. Everybody should go. It's incredible. The history, even younger people, millennials, they don't even know what Pompeii is in Italy. You got to go and see it. You'll be blown away. It's nothing like the movies that show all this, you know, kind of fake, uh, you know, reconstruction CGI. But in reality, it, it, there's so much more beauty and history and culture in this beautiful city. And I am taking over uh, something very important that was done in 1971 when the Pink Floyd performed. They were the only band people performing in this wow. particular piece, which I cannot say what it is. But now the mayor and everyone, including the European Parliament, are behind me to do something for America and for the world to see. It's going to be done next year and it's going to be spectacular with some huge names as my guest. So I've been working, girl. <laughs> I must come. I must come see that because. 
Oh, my you'll be family. there. You'll be there. We'll, no, we'll I must. You. I must. When I, I find yes, out what it is, involved. Yes. because I will. Because you know, my family uh, is from Italian. Uh, no, they're, you're they're from Canadian. You're from yeah, yeah, yeah. So just and east so of there, you know, um, I would absolutely be such an honor to come see you perform in Pompeii. You oh, to have my you there and you stay. goodness! Why not? Because I think you. Oh my goodness! You have. You should yeah. come and interview everybody. Just have like a special. I, Edition. It would be my honor, and I would absolutely do that. Trivia. Really, are you there? And, just and incredible. Me. Just don't put me on stage to sing. I cannot sing. You don't no, want you to. Really uh, never know. Uh, no, no. no when I tell you, I can't. Deborah, you don't even want to go there, really. We got a connection. <laughs> People leave the house when I start singing. You know, oh. I'll just do. I'll do what I'm good at. How about that? I'll interview it. <laughs> Stop the madness. <laughs> you say, Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, you got that. Okay, oh, yeah. you're also going to be doing something here in the States, right? Can you tell us a little bit about that for a couple of years? I don't know what I'm allowed to say when I'm not. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yes, I can. all I can say because I am under strict NDA and I will be chewed alive and spit it out if I say everything. But um, I'm already like ruining myself. <laughs> How can I resist you, Deborah? You're such a good interviewer that I can't. And I'm such a good speaker. <laughs> it makes it a very dangerous combination. <laughs> you make my life easy. I hardly have to ask anything because you have <laughs> so much. No, you have so Everybody, much wonderful. Sure that, <laughs> yeah, no, no, I was going to say, I'm sure on, on Facebook, pe Facebook people are going to go, this woman talks so much. I don't That's okay. That, but me. No, no, no. It's usually me who talks too much. I actually, you know, you, you beat me. So this is great. <laughs> But please tell us about. <laughs> but tell us about what you're going to be doing. Italy, we win. We win in talking too much. <laughs> but uh, yes, to um, give you an idea, yes, I my biggest dream is, is becoming a reality. I I have headlined Las Vegas many many times, uh, ah. from on um, selling the on stage at the Coliseum of Caesar Palace to uh, the Bellagio, wow. to uh, many, many other casinos. I've done, and I've been very lucky to headline. So I've never had to do smaller rooms or smaller theaters. I've always been very lucky to go straight into big casinos. And, uh, you know, I think that my work speaks for itself. I, you know, I feel very confident. I love the, the, the Las Vegas audience because it's international. Everybody comes to Vegas, millions of people every day. So. Uh, one major player in Las Vegas, which I cannot say, but I will say that just like the big Hollywood person that you know, that, and you know the big player in Las Vegas that, that I'm working with, you know those things. I do, but I'm sworn you, to say you nothing. Be, so. yeah, you cannot say it yet, but soon we will, and you'll be the first, I promise, to come back to, to say it. Um, but I, he basically, he, he can, it's so hard for me to explain, but I wrote an incredible show and has got a lot to do with Italy, and I cannot say much, but it's gonna really pay tribute in a, Italy on steroids, I will say, way. <laughs> and uh, this huge uh, person has put together a huge team, always working wow. with my management as well. Luigi Caiola, my, my manager, is one of the biggest music managers in the world with Morricone, working with Bocelli, I mean, he's huge, and he put together this with me as well. And yes, I will be coming back to Vegas uh, soon, for a very, very long time in a major, major venue with a major, oh. major project. So it's a residency, but I cannot say much, you know, of course, we have to pray, the COVID and everything goes through. Uh, and, and so we can move forward. But I worked on this for the last year. And uh, I am so, it's exciting because it seems like everything goes well. The project in Vegas and my first movie musical with the studios are going to come wow. out at the same time. So wow. you can see a lot of me. Yes. You work? a lot um what do you do when you're not working because you've also recently had your share of hard <laughs> well i know you do because you've had your share of some hard times right someone that you love very much passed away this past year yeah, um my, i know yeah. my former manager uh, and, part, and life partner of 15 years he, I, he, um jay hall great uh, man who uh, has really took me from you know a little kid from sicily to make me a star in America. He, uh, he was an incredible human being with a big heart and unfortunately cancer claimed his life. I took care of him in the last few years of his life. And uh, this would be my first Christmas without him. So it's, uh, it's a difficult uh, thing. I try to numb myself, not to think about it. My mom is also battling cancer right now. So 
it's uh, it's uh, and I and I'm and there's somebody else at the hospital right now that I'm caring for that is uh, you know battling for his life too. So it's been a very difficult year for everybody. We all facing. I am not going to put myself anywhere in front of anybody else because I know a lot of my fans and a lot of people out there in the world are suffering for COVID for different things that have happened. So I have an enormous respect for others, but even through it all, I feel that my my job is to honor the memory of, of people like all these people lost their life and and Jay in particular being a music man that wanted me to do great in life with my career and continue his work. And I'm happy that Luigi Cayola, the came in, I, I'm non Gigi, the manager of Morricone and the Bocelli uh, producer for the Christmas special I told you about, that the Gigi and I met uh, in 2012, at the time he was producing my record with Daniel Morricone and I was working with Jay. So when Jay passed away, I reached out to Gigi and I said, and you died, his composer, G and Jay died, and they were both Scorpio at the same time. They died. It was crazy. They, they, wow. they, they said the serendipity in some ways, and Luigi and I immediately said yes. Let's um, let's do this together, and we are building mm. incredible things. I love him. You love him. Should interview him because he managed. I'd love to. And he's incredibly powerful. He's Italian, and as a beautiful, and he calls me his little sweet tomato. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Michael, that's what I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you my little sweet tomato. I why not? You but are? you know why? Deborah calls me the sweet tomato because he said, Romina, when Ennio Morricone passed away, I was going, well, I'm going to retire because, you know, I made plenty of money, I had a great career, you know, and he's young, he's only 60 years old. But he's like, look, I, I don't have to work anymore. I'm just going to cultivate my tomatoes in, in my garden. And that's what I'm going to do as a good Italian. And he goes, and they're good tomatoes from Campania, you know, from, from where you come from, right, Avellino. And, uh, and then I said, well, can I convince you to come and work with me? Because I really would love to. And he says, okay, then from now on, you'll be my sweet little tomato. My, I'm going to write that down. <laughs> you know? My little, no. Now listen, that's going to be your next album, My Little Sweet Tomato. <laughs> that would be sponsored by Giant Food, what do you call it? <laughs> no, I'm telling you, that's it, My Little Sweet Tomato. Um, but I know that you were... <laughs> you, by the way, you are very funny. I gotta tell you. Thank you. You're thank very you. You know, You're very I do, uh, thank you for saying that. I actually do comedy sometimes on the side and people say, oh, you should keep doing it. I'm like, no, 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 not so much. I'm not, I don't really like performing so much, actually. I prefer no. doing this. No, I like to ask other people about their lives. When I'm the one on stage, I get a little bit nervous. So I, I actually prefer not to. So I, I oh, like to have... You're nervous. You, <laughs> but you're I will... <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Once I'm... You know how that goes. Once you're on stage, you, all, it goes away, right? But just getting up there, it's like... Adrenaline, uh, adrenaline kicks in and you kind of have to deliver and you're just in the moment. I understand. But making people laugh is... Um, People don't realize it's, a, it's so hard, but, but you are funny. I mean, when I'm saying you're funny now. I mean, does it sound good? Well, let me rephrase that. You're very entertaining when you want to be, but you're also very intriguing. You're a great journalist. That's why oh. I call you the Italian opera because there's nobody better than you. I've been watching you for so long and you interview so many people that I love as well. And, uh, and you're such a gracious and beautiful woman. So you deserve, uh, and you have already done enormous things with CNN and all the, you know, the Los Angeles news, all the things that you've done, it's just, I, you talk about me and my background. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, what about Deborah? Look at her. She's beautiful and so talented. And we're so lucky to, to be interviewed. Thank by you. <laughs> but I'm about this big compared to you, but I'll take it. Thank you. Thank we're all, you, thank we're you. all the same. We're just doing different things and we work together to help each other. That's how the world should be. Like, there the, the shouldn't be like bigger and smaller. I think we all, human beings who just need love and support and there is space for everybody in this world. I talk to everyone out there that's so scared to lose their position. I know people that are watching probably going, hmm, but, but you know what? Mm. <laughs> I know who they are. <laughs> I know they're watching, but you know, but the thing is like, we do have to be supportive of one another. We cannot mm. go against each other. The world, especially women, we gotta be supportive. We, we, this that's is what I'm saying, especially yeah. as women. Okay, before I let you go, and I don't wanna let you go, I'm just gonna get on a plane <laughs> okay, and go visit <laughs> um, what do you do? Tell us something about Romina that people don't read about and don't know about when you're on stage, like that we wouldn't even know about you. Tell us. Well, I do love reading, first of all. I love books so much. I can just lose myself in a, in a bookstore and just... Yeah. I love that. That is one of the things that I, that I love doing when I have time. <laughs> um, I write a lot. And my, when I write music, it's not just for making a business. 
Um, right. Because I'm going through a lot of like, you know, heartbreaks and actually yeah. some, a journalist called me the singer for the women with a broken heart because I do, I do talk a lot about love and I don't have love in my life, uh, the kind of love and I never, I mean, I lost, of course, love. But I mean, I felt always that something has been missing in my life in that way. And I'm not afraid to talk mm. about it because a lot of people feel lonely out there, especially during the holidays. And I want to say this is a message to everyone that is lonely right now, not to feel their way, to find strength in themselves, in God, if they believe in God, in the universe, whatever you want to call it. But just know that there's always someone out there to support you and to make you smile. I just, you know what I do, Deborah? I try to, con to, con to con uh, connect with people that need someone there for them. So when I have time, I am very involved. For example, one thing that is very important to me is a philanthropy. I am supporting, and actually today, as of December 15th, that we're recording this, we're doing this, uh, there is a telethon with CRPS, which is a wonderful foundation with another Deborah, uh, the, the CEO of uh, this wonderful organization that uh, focuses on raising awareness and funding on the research for people who are suffering from uh, nervous kind of illnesses and diseases. It's not just mental, but actually even physical. When I was attacked, I had unfortunately developed some nerve system problems that had to do with my eyesight, with my brain, and then live with this pain all the time. And people don't realize that people live with conditions, whether you have MS or you're just going through any type of, of challenge of this sort, or you're in a wheelchair. So I am actually focusing a lot of my attention on several things, several causes. I raised millions of dollars for a lot of organization. I'm planning to do that for this organization too, CRPS. And everyone, I invite everyone to, to support Teleton or whatever they're doing because it's incredible. So my time is this, it's giving back to others. I know it sounds something that somebody would say just to be cool, but no, I have no family. My mom is my family. She's in Italy and I'm hoping to, that this Omicron will allow me to see her this holiday. But besides my mother and the people in my team that I adore as my own family, really my time is dedicated to the people that are in need. So anything that I can do, I, I'm launching a message to anyone that needs uh, whatever I can do for them. I feel that that's what it's all about. When I die one day, hopefully when I'm 150 years old. <laughs> well, You'll know. make it. You will definitely <laughs> make it. With that, with that kind of energy, come on. Um, <laughs> I, will, I will warn everybody else how and I'll still be alive. No, but I'm saying. Uh, but I'm and saying singing. That, and singing, but I, I want people to remember me, not as a singer actually, <laughs> but as someone that made a difference into their lives. That's what I want to do. So that's what I do. Simple as that. No magic uh, Hollywood stuff here. Very simple person. Just myself, as you see me. No filters, just me. Literally. Everybody tells me, Romina, you have no filters. Uh, P my PR, my public relation company hates me. <laughs> okay, you don't say this, you don't say this. And I'm like, blah, blah, blah. And then that's you have, you know what? You have to be authentic to cut through. I do believe that. You've yes. got to be authentic. I believe that. I really do. Um, anything you want to tell our audience in terms of uh, how to get in touch with you, how to find you, your latest work that they can find? Sure, sure. Well, we are, first of all, there is a um, wonderful Christmas album that I actually released last year. Uh, but uh, right now, thanks to iHeartRadio all over the United States. Thank you, Tony Clark and iHeartRadio nationwide for playing my song. I have a single called Winter Sunshine, which is the single of a wonderful holiday album called Beautiful Surprise, A Beautiful Surprise. And it contains, of course, some classics of, of the holidays. It contains some originals, like A Winter Sunshine that I wrote. Uh, and yes, it's the first that we can see on screen, uh, the first with my half of my face in there. And <laughs> and also contains something that I never released before, some tracks live from my uh, first national major, uh, Disney, ABC, and ESPN Christmas special that's still airing on ESPN Plus uh, called uh, Holiday Movie Skating spectacular where i had the pleasure to be the first italian born to create bribe executive produce show run and produce and star in this amazing holiday tv special tv special and international we're bringing together the biggest ice skaters in the world from brian Boitano to christy agamucci uh to oh. Kim, kimmy meisner these are all world champions of course my good friend nancy kerrigan which might be watching right now uh, is another amazing uh, human being they worked on some of his specials and um, yes, and so I, I just, uh, I'm promoting this beautiful album, A Beautiful Surprise. It's on Amazon, it's on Spotify and Amazon Music and, and Spotify. 
read you know apple music and all the digital platforms and stay tuned because we're going to be launching this project called musica paradiso the album is not done yet wow. we're working on it which is going to be again a new collection a new revised collection of the biggest all not all the movies scored by ennio morricone with uh, for the first time lyrics of mine in uh, french english italian spanish german japanese and other languages so it's gonna be beautiful and I'm excited for that as well because we are working with some amazing people. But I, I I don't know, there's so much more. I mean, there's there's, there's a book. Wow. I can also promote. Oh, this that's book. right. It's a best-selling book on Amazon. And this is called- Where what did, is that called? It's called Where Did They Film That Italy? That question mark. Where did they film that? Question mark, Italy. It's a movie guide for travel lovers and a travel guide for movie lovers of Italy. So. I transported the audience to a romantic carpet journey into the most beautiful locations of movies filmed in Italy, from Under the Tuscan Sun, Cinema Paradiso, Roman Holiday, and, uh, even The Godfather. Hello, gotta put The Godfather in there, my Pacino connection. And uh, and this actually book has a record. There's also with the same title, uh, with Lake Shore Entertainment, one of the biggest um, entertainment uh, film companies in Hollywood that released the soundtrack companion album to this book and soon I will be launching my own travel series with a major TV network as well based on the book. So where did it come that? Which is very which where is very exciting. Come? That's really cool because you take us all over Italy where some really, really cool uh films were done. So that's right. exciting. Oh Romina, I just love you. You're just amazing. Right, so I'm gonna send you this uh, I'm gonna send you a couple of uh, goodies for Christmas. And, uh, and I have to tell you, the unique about this book is not only the locations, but I break down uh, areas, places to visit, churches, museums, whatever, and also spectacular beaches, places off the beaten path. So like things that nobody knows about, about Italy, because I literally went in there with Jay before he passed away. And we spent a long time there, a couple of months, to just go through the most unique places where these locations were located. And just, and not only that, but I put included recipes from the movie. So there's the Godfather recipes, under the Toscan Sun, James wow. Bond, which was filmed in Italy too, uh, in Cortina. Mm -hmm. So it's a good, it makes a good gift too. Oops, sorry. That <laughs> is, I know that green screen thing. It's like, by know, the way, I mean, the thing is I'm really in Hawaii, but I'm not, you can't see the ocean. You only see a bunch of jungle and the frogs. By the way, there's a frog that won't leave me alone. I call him Prince because I'm like, he comes at night, he comes in the morning. I'm like, do I kiss you? Are you going to be the love of my life? Maybe that's what I have to do. Oh, Romina, you are just no. such a love. I'm so sorry I have to let you go. Can will you come back? Like, um, really, would you come back maybe before uh, your appearance in Pompeii? Yes. Certainly uh, before we'll Vegas, or maybe we'll just come see you in Vegas. Uh, that yes. would be great. We'd love to have um, you. We're, we're putting all the pieces together right now, and it's big, Deborah. So I'm very excited that you are the first in a very, very long time. Fans haven't seen me in a long time, probably over two years. Except, of course, watching me on television or do the special because it, it repeats right on streaming. But I, um, you're the first person I decided to do this with, and I have an incredible okay. respect for San Pedro, for Little Italy, uh, for all the people that work there. Of course, you know, uh, great, great Buscaino, but uh, of course, you and Anna, you know, my beautiful Sardinian sister. Uh, I love her, she introduced us, so thank you. Big shout out to Anna. Anna, we um, love you, Anna, <laughs> absolutely love you. We love oh you. my gosh, so, so, so lovely you. talking to you, but let's stay in touch. I mean, I want yes. to wish you a very, very Merry Christmas because Merry I know Christmas. it's been quite a year for you. And also, um, this is how you get through it, right, Romina? You work, you make other people happy because I know that's important to you. I know it is. You always leave someone making feel, I feel better every time I talk to you, you know, no matter what. And I appreciate you for that. You I really me. do. So you... You deserve all good things back to you, Romina. So thank you for giving us your time. Um, a beautiful holiday to you. I hope you get back to Italy for the holidays. I really do. And let's connect in the new year. We'd love to have you down to San Pedro when you're here. But um, I really appreciate it. I want to wish you all the best and all the success. 
Um, That's it. And Grazie thank you. Natale. Beautiful woman. You are. Thank you for you. And you are incredible. I'm so appreciative of your precious time and energy. I do not take it for granted at all. And to Tony, you're, uh, is it Tony, right? The your engineer that works with you? Our engineer. He's somewhere back there, but yeah. I want to thank so, you so um, much also for allowing us to do this today. And, and I want to say also, I want to do a shout out to also not only all the, the fans and all the people that are following us and all the Italian, Italian Americans and those who love Italy things. And also my team from uh, uh, Christopher Fisher, who's uh, had the production to Luigi Cagliola, to Forrest Fisher, to the Ohana, which is the family that my, my team, they work together. The Maurizio Bezzeccheri, all the uh, Lucia Vuolo, all the people that really Claudia Gerini, they're working with me and making uh, my life easier with their support. So, and you, Deborah, are stunning, incredible. So, I look forward to help you as well, support your dreams, because I feel that there's something that we can do, and I would love to be of help and support for all the things in your heart. Thank you. I love I you. I look all. forward to that. I love you back. Have a beautiful <laughs> day. You. You too. And um, I look forward to seeing you in person and hearing you too. So um, thank you. And thank you everybody for joining our Little Italy of LA podcast. Make sure to check us out at our Little Italy district down in San Pedro. It's developing and um, we have lots of great things coming up. So uh, I'm your host, Deborah Zara Cobelt. You'll find this interview kind of everywhere, right? On YouTube, Facebook, IGTV, and then we transferred over into an audio podcast. So um, honestly, anywhere that you get your podcast, you'll find us. So Little Italy of LA, and also I simulcast it on Deborah Cobalt Live. So you'll find us. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, ciao. Bye-bye. <laughs>